What's going on guys? In today's video we're going to find out whether or not Evander Kane can save the Edmonton Oilers. If you guys haven't been paying attention to the hockey world much recently, you might not know. The Oilers lost like 10 to 12 games or something. Since then they've actually been playing a lot better. They won four straight and their last win was with Evander Kane on the squad. They just signed him to a one year like 2.1 million dollar deal after his contract got terminated by the San Jose Sharks and he actually scored a goal in his first game with the Oilers. So I'm curious to see you know if the Sim likes him playing on the Oilers top line with McDavid. I should mention to you guys, even though the Oilers you know had that huge losing streak after winning four straight they're only two points back the flames for the final wild card spot so that's literally just one win also too if you actually uh sort it by win percentage they currently have the eighth best win percentage in the west so they're looking like they should be a playoff team we'll see if evander kane kind of pushes them over the edge makes them a true stanley cup contender obviously i think his play on ice speaks for itself a very good power forward off ice though that's not quite the same case a lot of issues there so to try and replicate that i guess in game i'm gonna have morale on which i don't usually use but i think it'll kind of work here for this video or lose their 88 overall with kane i think before they were in 87 so we actually made them go up one hole overall as I mentioned, guys, gonna have player morale on. Other than that, though, it's just salary cap and computer trades. Alright, guys, we're on the franchise mode. My plan is to simulate the first half of the season with Kane in the AHL, opposed to actually on the Oilers. I'm gonna bring him on the team when he joined the team in real life. So that'd be for the January 29th game against the Montreal Canadiens. That was their 40th game of the season. So I'm curious to see where the Oilers are in game at this point compared to real life, where I think they had 44 points in 39 games. We'll see if they're doing better in the sim. Of course, we'll add Kane to the team at that point, and then we'll see kind of how he does in that second half of the season with the Oilers. Do they do better without Kane or with him? Curious to see the results. Also, if you guys are wondering, to start the sim, this is what the lines are looking like. Obviously, Kane will be joining McDavid on that first line once he joins the team. Did my best to make them realistic with, you know, everyone healthy there, aside from Clefbaum, because he is out for the year. Um, and then in the AHL, like I mentioned, Kane's playing there, he's first class Seagor and Perlini, so hopefully if he plays well in the AHL, like it doesn't make his rating, morale, or anything like that, you know, go too much into the tank. So I'll start the sim here, guys, to that Montreal game, and we'll add Kane to the team and see what happens. Now this is kind of funny, guys, about a month in the simulation, McDavid came to me saying he's not happy with how the team's performing, needs a fix, his suggestion's a coaching change, in real life, the Oilers did not, you know, fire Dave Tippett yet, so I'm thinking I'll promise him an improvement to the team's top six, which of course will be me calling up Evander Kane, Hopefully, you know, <laughs> when I say give me some time, some time is like four months or whatever, because obviously we do not want a upset Connor McDavid. This is kind of funny, guys. McDavid was like, you promised to improve the team literally a week later. So I guess that's what some time means. Um, I said I gave him more thought, confident the team can turn it around. He goes, I thought it was a roster change we needed, but maybe it's a GM change. Damn! So McDavid here, coming for Ken Holland's job. That's not good. All right, guys, we're at the point where Vander Kane joins the Edmonton Oilers. As you can see, they're currently sitting 500 here with a record of 21, 21, and 6. Now, I totally forgot what the games they missed due to COVID. So, as you can see, they've currently got 48 points in 48 games. Where in real life, like I mentioned, they had 44 and 39 at this point. So, they played an extra 9 games. Pretty similar spot, though. They're on the outside looking in, although they're only, what, 5 points out of a playoff spot there. So, if they play well from here on out, they can still get in. I should mention, too, I didn't show it, but... Dry style. He's got 57 and 48 right now. Just like McDavid, he came to me with issues. His was ice time because he's second line center, even though he's 94 overall. And he's getting 60 minutes a night. I don't know why. Like, he should be getting a lot more. Nuge gets 19. I think actually it's because Nuge plays power play and PK. I just realized that because I've got Dry style on the power play and the four man power play. I feel like the coach should be running the second line more. There's really nothing I can do in that regard. So. We're going to call Vander Kane now, who surprisingly hasn't talked to me at all. He's averaging almost a point per game in the AHL right now, 46 and 49. In real life, I think he had like 8 points in 5 games or something solid. So, so we'll get a Vander Kane into this lineup here. I'm thinking easiest thing would just be to take out Josh Archibald. He's injured in real life right now. I'll uh, we'll throw Kane on the first line. And real quick, guys, as I was editing, I realized I forgot to tell you that I removed Vander Kane's X Factors. Reason being, they really help with the chemistry boost. And I didn't really think that made a lot of sense for Vander Kane. For these lines, guys, I'm using the exact same lines I'm using in real life right now. We've got a Vander Kane playing on the first line with McDavid and Yamamoto. Second line is Pugliarvi, Dreisaitl, Fogel. Third line there is Hyman, Eugene Hopkins, Cassian. Clearly, they're going for like the depth approach there. Every line has some playmakers on it, opposed to you know going top heavy with say McDavid, Dreisaitl, Nuge all in that first line. And the fourth line here getting a minus one isn't too bad. Sure, Ryan McLeod. I moved Ryan to center because like he's got 90 face so it makes more sense for McLeod to be on the wing. Uh, defensively there, I think it's the same look as before. Now, special teams here, again, same ones are using in real life. So right there, you can see New just centering the first power play. They got McDavid on the point with Barry, which is where he'd be if healthy. 
Hyman was on the second with Evander Kane. Four-man power play here, kind of did my best guess. The PKs are also as accurate as they could be. Getting pretty big boost there, plus two, plus five. The three-man there as well. So Nuge is on like every special team, which should help out him being third-line center. We'll see if uh, Vander Kane on this team with the new lines helps the Oilers push into the playoff spot again. Really surprised to see them kind of doing as bad as they are. Usually the Edmonton Oilers are pretty good in the sim. Also, too, guys, I realized I didn't even show you Vander Kane on the Oilers yet in game. Obviously, he did play on Saturday against Montreal, so we actually saw what he looks like in the Oilers jersey in real life. But right here, we can now see him in game, Rocky number 91, of course. So uh, we'll see if Vander Kane can save the Edmonton Oilers, who, again, kind of funny, like in real life, they're spiraling out of control a bit here, but uh, they still have a lot of time left. They got 34 games left to make up five points on the Ducks and the Stars. Let's see if they can do it. Throughout the trade deadline now, guys, I would say we're probably a conservative buyer because I'm going to continue simming here. We are just above 500. Obviously, we're still trying to, you know, get into the playoffs. Columbus gets Brodeen and Fiala. Kent Johnson in a first rounder. That's a blockbuster. Uh, we actually were like a point or so back of the playoffs at one point a couple weeks ago. It's going to be really close. And there's now five games left in the season here, guys. You can see there in the standings. We are three points back of the Sharks for the final wildcard spot in the West. And the Sharks have two games in hand, but the Canucks there, one point more, same games as us. So... If we can go 4-1 and one here, we have a shot. I don't know, though. The Sim isn't liking the Oilers right now. A loss against the Stars, a loss against the Avs. Yeah, no way. They had to go at least 4-1, and one, and they go 1-4. and four, The exact opposite of what they needed to do. They finished the season there with 82 points in 82 games. So, yeah, the Vander Kane there really didn't help the Oilers much. I think they actually did the exact same with him as they did without him, as I want to say they had 48 points in 48 games when we added them to the team. And they finished there with 82 and 82. Honestly, surprised. I thought like the Oilers would have been doing really good um, during the sim, even before we added Kane. McDavid, though, did go up in overall now at 98 after putting up 95. Dry style there did really well. So Evander Kane, I mean, he played well with the Oilers there. 34 points, 34 games. He had 22 goals. Um, the Sims doesn't like how they're built, I guess. Although, look at that. Seven players at 50 plus points. Pujarvi, Amato, Hyman, Nuge, Barry at 69. Nice. Um, if Kane played the whole season, he would have obviously had at least 50 points for sure. Is that their goaltending? Their goaltending is pretty rough. Smith got most of the starts and did not play well at all. So, yeah, I think just Evander Kane. How many minutes did he play? He was averaging 20 minutes a night on that first line. McDavid, probably a big reason for his success. And, yeah, I think just, I don't know, their goaltending, maybe their defense. The Sim did not like the Oilers this time. Eichel, though, uh, finishes first in scoring. That is if he played healthy the entire year. And McDavid wasn't even on the first uh, page of scoring. Well, he was one player off. Barry does not lead a uh, defenseman in scoring again, but he is on the first page. Ten back there of Hamilton. Rookie skaters, I don't think Edmonton really has anyone. Zegras, 69. Nice. And, of course, our goalies did very poorly. So, we'll take a look here and see where they finished the entire league. And right there, you guys can see the Edmonton Oilers 24th in the NHL with 82 points, 82 games. I mean, Florida's only one above them, and obviously, Florida could win the President's Trophy this year. So... Anything can happen in the Sim. Maple Leafs that are quite low. Same with the Penguins. What a weird year for the Sim. Um, Buffalo, Arizona at the bottom there. That's not really a surprise. Now, I was thinking it might be morale, but I don't think so. I'll show you guys the morales. They're actually really good. I think the big kind of change here is the fact that we didn't have McDavid and Dreisaitl playing together on that first line, as that gives them a plus five. The Sim really likes, you know, the superstars getting the extra minutes in real life. Dry cells on that second line. Evander Kane actually had the best morale of anyone on the team. I can see that at the top there. It's amazing. McDavid's is amazing. Sure. Um, I think even Dry Sal, who was like talking to us about ice time, his morale still ended up being amazing. The rest of the team, I think, is actually happy, except for only guy that's not happy is Zach Cassian, or I guess Bouchard and Cassian are both neutral. Uh, Cassian, the only guy there that's disgruntled. So I don't really think it's the morale. Again, I think it's just the lines. Uh, they probably didn't really work. So. Maybe that's a sign. I don't know there's uh, fans in real life. Maybe you should, you know, put McDavid and Dreisaitl together on a line and just let them dominate for almost half the game when they play like 25 minutes a night together. Who knows? Maybe that's a recipe for success. But I'll quickly, guys, sim the playoffs. We'll see who won it, see the awards, and that'll be it. Talk about a weird year, guys. The Blue Jackets there win the Stanley Cup. Bakersfield Condors, though, actually won the Calder Cup. I didn't think, you know, they were doing that good, especially after we took away their best player in Evander Kane. Nashville going to be getting Shane Wright. Buffalo there, we're getting Savoy, Logan Cooley, whoever. So I'll take a look at the awards, like I was saying. I can't believe the Blue Jackets there. That's only, you know, it's a bit of a weird uh, Sam. They beat the Canucks in the Stanley Cup final. They sweep the Red Wings in the conference final. Wow. Some heavy hitters not there. Florida, Toronto, Pittsburgh, as we mentioned. 
Um, the West there definitely looks a bit more realistic, but um, yeah, that's a surprise to be sure. So the awards here, Colorado winning the President's Trophy, that's at least realistic. Eichel Art Ross, Mark Stone with the heart, Fox, James Norris back to back, Kane, Lady Bing, New Hook, Calder, over Zegris, wow, even though Zegris had more points. Jenner, Cunt, Smythe, Kemper, Vesna, Shashirkin, William Jennings, Chernak, Will Masterton, St. Louis coach Jack Adams. I think it probably should have been the Columbus coach or even the Red Wings coach and Jeff Blash will gain it if those two teams are making the playoffs. Bergeron gets a Selkie, Stone, Ted Lindsay, and then Obi, then Risha Shard. I forgot to point that out. So, um, pretty cool, you know, to see the results there, guys. Like I said, definitely a shocker. I thought Oilers would be well into a playoff spot and Evander came and kind of pushed them over the hump and they'd potentially win the Stanley Cup. But um, as it turns out, turmoil from the start of the season and they're just a 500 team. And in real life, like, you know, they're doing pretty similar. I think they're going to get it together because um, luckily they're adding Kane with more games left in the season. Hopefully they can build some chemistry and push into the playoffs. I feel like the playoffs are just better with McDavid and Dreisaitl in them. We'll have to wait and see, obviously, what happens in real life. Like I was saying, though, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.